In this week's You Can Project, we're going to build a low-cost Hakko 907 digital soldering station using an Arduino with some basic components. Say hello to powerful constant temperature goodness and quick warm-up times as fast as 25 seconds. If you're tired of waiting 10 minutes for your cheapo soldering iron to heat up and constantly running at max temperatures that could damage some expensive chips, this project can be really helpful. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you the design process on how I arrived at the design and if you want to skip through the boring parts, you can skip to this timestamp of the video. Let us first understand what's inside most digital soldering iron handles. What I have with me here is the classic Hakko 907 handle. You get a replaceable metal jacket tip with a heating element that goes at its core. It operates at 50 watts, 24 volts, and has a thermistor inside that acts as a temperature sensor. There's a board inside that links them to the wire and a proprietary DIN connector. You can actually buy a Hakko clone handle and replace the heating element with an original Hakko element to get a cheaper Hakko experience. However, I did find out that the clones are at par with the original Hakko handles. I got some useful info for this project from my old manuals. I'll be sharing a link to the PDF file below if you're interested. Due to the lack of data for the thermistor, I ran a test by monitoring the temperature at the tip while varying the power that goes to the heating element. I recorded the resistances of the thermistor with its corresponding temperatures at the iron's tip. Then I plotted the recorded data on Microsoft Excel for further analysis. Here are the tip temperatures with their corresponding thermistor resistances. I graphed the response for designing the closed loop system and I was glad to find out that it had a linear trend within the operating temperature range. This makes the programming a lot easier. What I was interested in was these two points, the ambient temperature and max temperature response. In order to get a useful output voltage from the sensor, a voltage divider must be used. I made some assumptions and computed for R1, then I computed for the output voltage of the divider for both conditions. Now I needed to find out if the divider can be connected directly to the Arduino's analog pin, and some further computation proves that you cannot, as the data points are too closely packed together. So I resorted to using an op amp to upscale the output and solve for the minimum minimum required gain. With an output voltage of 3.58 volts at max temperature condition, this leaves us enough room for thermistor deviations for different handles to avoid clipping. And here's the final design for the sensor. And for the heating element, we're using PWM and an N-channel MOSFET for controlling the power. Now we have the consolidated schematic for the project. I then designed a single-sided, homebrew-friendly PCB layout. You can omit connecting a jumper if you avail online double-sided PCB fabrication. I'm giving you an option to use an I2C LCD or a regular character LCD. Now here are the things that you will need for this project. If you live in the Philippines, you can visit Igismo Manila and they have pretty much everything. If not, I'm providing alternative links below. You'll need a Hakko 907 handle and a power supply. I recommend 24 volts, 3 amps. Laptop chargers would also work for this project. It's building time. I got my PCB layout professionally done by PCBWay. My design cost me $5 and I got 5 copies of it. The order arrived on time within just a few days. And the results were amazing! I'm providing quick links below to purchase my board without having to manually input the Gerber files from the website. The power supply input goes here and no need for a jumper since this is a double-sided board. The iron seater goes here and its sensor. You can use an I2C LCD for this project or a regular 16x2 LCD. And the temperature adjustment knob goes here. Here's the schematic as reference for the project. I usually grab something like a tin can to work as my helping hands as I mount the components. I started by screwing the MOSFET in place. The logic level MOSFET is saturated so no need for a heatsink. Just follow the silk screen for the parts placement. Attach the Arduino Nano and some headers for the buck converter. Don't solder it just yet, you still have to calibrate the output of the buck converter. Set your power supply to 24 volts and provide power at the input. Grab a voltmeter and monitor the voltage at the output. Taking the Arduino dropout voltage into consideration, tune the trimmer resistor until you get an output voltage of 6.5 volts. After that, you may proceed with the assembly. Oh yeah, don't forget the capacitor. Once you're done, you can use tape on the components to hold them in place while soldering. Use some flux if you must because it really helps me with the soldering. After that, you can use your clippers to remove the excess leads. Just an option, if you want to remove the flux residue, using alcohol or pure acetone with a toothbrush helps a lot with the cleanup. And now you have an assembled Hakko 907 digital soldering station board. Hmm, 
Find or buy an enclosure. For the enclosure, you can buy a ready-made one and just drill some holes, just like what I did for my mini spot welder project. But I wanted mine to be really small and aesthetically pleasing, so I ended up 3D modeling one on SolidWorks and sliced it up on Cura. I then 3D printed an enclosure and took it out for a matte black paint job. If you want the 3D printed design, you can download the STL files from the links below. I proceeded by mounting the DC jack and screwing it in place. If you're using my 3D printed design, no need for standoffs, just mount the board in place. Solder the DC jack to the board and you might want to add an extra fuse for safety. For the LED indicator, just solder a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor in series. I can't find a specific female DIN connector for this, so I ended up replacing it with a similar connector that I had. Nonetheless, I still followed the original Hakko pin configuration. There are no screw mounts for this one, so I had to use super glue to secure it in place. Next, I added a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer as my temperature adjustment knob. Don't forget to use the nut and washer. I'm using a 16 by 2 LCD display with an I2C driver. Once you're all set, you can solder wires from the board to the external component. We're not done just yet because we still have to program the Arduino. Connect the Arduino Nano to your computer and download the program that I made. Open it using the Arduino IDE and be sure you have this library. If your values are a bit off, these are the only variables you have to adjust for calibrating the temperature. If you have an underpowered power supply, you can adjust the maximum PWM value to limit the power draw. The rest are codes for the variable closed loop temperature feedback. Select Arduino Nano as your board and upload the program. The code works by turning on the heating element when the actual temperature is lower than the preset temperature. The heater turns off when it goes above the preset temperature. At this point, the heater will pulse on and off to maintain a constant temperature. The finishing touches. If your LCD is not working, you probably have to adjust the contrast knob. Once your project is well calibrated, you can now screw it together. The project works at a maximum voltage of 24 volts DC and it means you can power it with batteries or a power supply. Repurposed laptop chargers would also work for this project. I did a test by supplying it with different input voltages and recorded the corresponding current draw and arrived with my power supply recommendation. 24 volts 3 amps would give you the best performance. Connect a power supply to your project and a piece of resistance, the knob. Hmm. Very smooth. And sharing my little soldering hack, adding thermal paste inside the soldering tip significantly increases the thermal performance as well, giving you faster warm-up times. And that's how you make a cheap Hakko 907 variable digital soldering station. I hope you like this project. Thanks for watching.